What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel for all things Dodger baseball. You're going to want to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And today I want to know from you guys, do you think that Profar's swing was dirty? Let me know down below in the comment section. And how do you feel about the Padres versus Dodgers now? Do you think it is because me a rivalry do you think it's already a rivalry give me your takes down below in the comment section and for all latest dodgers news head over to dodgersnation.com so how's that for some April baseball? The Dodgers versus the Padres, the first series of the year between these two clubs, it delivered and then some. The Blue Bloods versus the New Bloods, it went down in San Diego. The series really had everything from the two teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe in game one, yet all the lead changes, yet Dennis Santana getting into it with Jorge Mateo. He had to beat LA chance back down in San Diego. A lot of Dodger fans did find a way to make it into Petco Park, by the way. And then game two, you had Mookie, Magic, one of the best catches you'll see all year, I guarantee it. The biggest star on the field made the biggest play of the season. A 10% catch probability for Mookie Betts, and he was just amazing. That catch was ridiculous. And then in Game 3, the Padres, they get the win. The Dodger bats go cold. And as great as this series was for the Dodgers, they were that close to getting swept. Look, Game 1, they could have lost if it wasn't for Dennis Santana and David Price and the heroics of Corey Seager going deep. And then in Game 2, if Mookie doesn't make that catch, that game is tied and then yesterday they lost in game three after Blake Snell settled down after giving up the two run shot to Chris Taylor but both these teams are stacked both these teams have so much talent but the Dodgers are winners winners win and that is what the Dodgers have you saw that championship medal from your boys in blue and it was just an exhilarating fantastic series I can't wait until we get it on again this week at the ravine but bottom line the Dodgers went down there and took care of business taking two out of three winning the series and they still have the best record in all of major league baseball but you know the tensions were going to flare at some point and in game two Clayton Kershaw he thought he had the strikeout to jerks in pro far and they ruled catcher's interference we're going to take a deep dive on this play and I want your opinion do you think that it was a dirty play by jerks in pro far how do you feel about the ruling well let's break it down Bottom of the fourth inning, Kershaw versus Profar. Two outs, 3-2 count. Looks like he gets the punch out. Umpire rings him up, and then Profar starts arguing catcher's interference. You see the ball, hit the glove, and then the bat hits the glove right after that. Now, was it just bad or just Bush League? I think it was a little Bush League because you don't see swings like this at the big league level. It doesn't even look like he's looking at the ball. He's focused on the catcher's mitt. He makes contact with it. He's way behind it. And you see Austin Barnes was not interfering with it. It was a potentially dangerous play, as Clayton Kershaw pointed out. You could have hurt his hand. But for a guy whose last name is Profar, this is a real amateur swing. And then Kershaw was heated. He mad mad. You can see him. That's a bullshit swing. That's a bullshit swing. And then here's Profar. Shut the F up. Shut the F up. And Kirsch gives him a thumbs up. A little sarcastic right there. And then Kirsch says it's if somebody hits it hard, you know he knows the rules. I thought for a second, like somebody's going to hit you hard. <laughs> and then after the ruling, Profar is over there talking to Max Muncy on first. He's like, why would I do that on purpose? I'm battling. And I guess Profar's definition of battling is these non-big league swings where it looks like he's trying to intentionally hit the catcher's glove. And then Mad Max is like, yo, why is this dude trying to talk to me? So lesson to the San Diego Padres, don't get the goat mad. I'm telling you, Clayton Kershaw has the heart of a lion. He's as competitive as it gets on a baseball diamond. And the very next inning, he draws a walk to give the Dodgers a 1-0 lead. This is why you don't mess with the GOAT. Next inning, Clayton Kershaw takes ball one, low and away. It's clearly just a bit outside. And Darvish, he asks the ump, he says, little outside? He says, yep. Then he takes ball two, low and inside. A strike at the top of the zone. Fouls one off. Fouls another one off. Fouls a third one off. And then he takes ball four, low and outside. RBI walk for Kershaw to give the Dodgers the lead. And then he flips the bat, takes his base. Don't mess with the GOAT. And then he was asked about what he was trying to do in his at-bat against you, Darvish, and here was his response. Uh, yeah, just trying to be annoying, really. You know, I think uh, 
I wasn't going to get a hit off of him. He's got too good of stuff. So it's just kind of like trying to be a nuisance as best you can and fouling off pitches and making him work a little bit. And uh, I'm fortunate to get a walk right there. Just a fantastic at bat from Clayton Kershaw, fouling off pitches, taking pitches, and then taking his base and giving the Dodgers the lead. Well, after the game, he was asked about the play with Jerkson Profar, and here's what he had to say. I mean, I, that's uh, that, that's a little scary. You know, I think uh, Barnsley could have been seriously injured on that play. Um, you know, he basically swung straight down and backwards. Um, and I'm not saying it was intentional, but like, that that was that was not a big league swing right there. So um, I asked the umpire if I can just hit the catcher's glove every time. Then I you know I got a much better chance of doing that than hitting the ball. You know, so um, th there's some uh, there, there's some leeway, some gray area within that rule that might need to be looked at for sure. So a thrilling first series of the year between the Dodgers and the Padres, two elite teams, two stacked rosters. The Padres are going to do everything they can to try to catch the Dodgers in the NL West. I was really impressed with their pitching, especially yesterday. And the Dodger bats definitely went cold in game three, but the Dodgers showed they have that championship medal. They make plays when you need to. They make winning plays on the baseball diamond. And you got to feel for these Padres fans. All these heartbreak moments from the Dodgers. Look, this is a look inside a Padres. Padres fan and the nightmares that the Dodgers have caused them over the years. And another drive in the high right center at the wall running and watching it go out, believe it or not. Four consecutive home runs and the Dodgers have tied it up. And a high fly ball to left field. It is a way the Dodgers win it 11 to 10. Looks there, makes the catch. Here's the throw to the plate. It is there, and the game is over. Chris Taylor ends the night with an outfield assist from left. And the Dodgers take the series from the Padres. Going, he's at the wall. Hey, I'm just messing with you, Padres fans. Us Dodger fans, we've had our nightmare moments through the years, too. Look, the good thing is you are a relevant team. The Padres are a relevant baseball team. They're one of the most talked about teams in the league right now. And the Dodgers versus the Padres, they're going to be delivering 16 more times this season. I'm excited about it. But let me know down below in the comments. Do you think the play with Profar was a dirty play? And do you think it's more of a rivalry now after the first series? You know my take on that. It's a temporary rivalry because if they weren't a great team, it wouldn't be a rivalry. A real rivalry is when you can throw out the records and it's still a rivalry. It doesn't matter what the record is between the Dodgers and the Giants. You always want to beat them. This rivalry is contingent on the Padres being a great team, but I want your takes down below in the comments section. And for all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. That's at DMAC underscore LA. And for all latest Dodgers, Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.